you're going to feel a little sad, but you will also feel a little bit uplifted. So we just hope that you leave here feeling a little bit differently than you did when you came in. All right? Um, there will be three monologues, and then we will have a short intermission. We will be selling raffle tickets. At the intermission, we have a ton of prizes. Okay, so if you get a ticket, you're probably going to get something. Okay? And actually, we're raffling off Peter tonight as well. I've been trying to think how I was going to... Can I auction him off? Can I raffle him off? What can I do? But it turns out he's a great cook. And one of the prizes tonight is he will come to your house and he will cook dinner for you and someone else, or just for you if you want. <laughs> I'm buying 10 tickets. All right. <laughs> so we will have the intermission. We will have the intermission. After the intermission, uh, Chris Green from Busan Volunteers will be playing. Uh, yeah, yeah, Chris! Yeah, Chris! giving a short presentation describing where the money for tonight's show is going. And also, I guess we're selling tickets for the Vagina Monologues. So we the, the Sunday, one week from today, 2 p.m., the 2 p.m. Yeah. show. Okay. Come find me. All right, come find the woman in the red top. Which is <laughs> There's really a lot of people, but they can probably direct you to April. Um, speaking of which, uh, first of all, I want to thank HQ Bar. Uh, you know, they normally closed on Sunday and they opened up just for us. And I saw Andrew up here at like 2 o'clock and he was sweating. And a little grumpy, maybe. <laughs> so, and also, before I forget, I'd like to thank April and Jen from the Vagina Monologue. <laughs> so much to help us. All I really had to do was deal with these five, which, a, which actually was kind of a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, but it was, it, it, was, it was a labor of love. All right, so without further ado, let's uh, get on to our first performance. All right, our first piece tonight was written by Tom Antonek, a Florida doctor who specializes in substance abuse treatment. He has also worked extensively with victimized women who have developed addictions in an attempt to anesthetize the pain related to their traumas. Dr. Antonek is the founder and clinical director of the Growth Center and the president of the Florida Medical Professionals Group. Playing the part of Dr. Antonek will be Ricky Lee, a veteran of Iman. He was born and raised in Busan. Then he moved to the United States when he was 17 to further his education. He is currently in pre-law at Brigham Young University. psychology and Japanese. He says, it is my honor to be part of this great cause and hopes to facilitate awareness for the utmost necessities of human rights. Our first performer, everybody, Ricky Lee. <laughs> describing a horrific history of sexual abuse, an event that occurred 30 years before, as if the violation had occurred moments before, curling herself in a fetal position in her office. Listening to her story, I was consumed by unbearable suffering. Nothing, nothing I could say could take her pain away. Hearing of atrocities on an innocent child by a parent meant to be her protector I was repulsed as always, but also intensely aware of my own maleness and distressed by the thought that my sex, my inhibitor from healing from such violence. This happened to me with alarming frequency. There seems to be no end to the number of women who have been victimized by their fathers, uncles, brothers, lovers, husbands, male friends, and strangers. I don't know what concerns me more. The plethora of victims? or the abundance of perpetrators. 
These women come to me as a psychologist in hopes of receiving some measure of reprieve from their overwhelming despair. I often feel helpless to impact change and facilitate healing in their lives as I did when I tried to be the perfect song for you. So a tribute of answer to your great anguish. As a child, I did not have the capacity to begin to comprehend the measure of damage inflicted on you. As a little girl, brutally victimized by your father, pathological sociopath who only had a concern for his own immediate fate, libidinal needs. Even now, the cost you pay is unimaginable to me. Intellectually and professionally, I've acquired a skill of diagnosing the constellation of symptoms that comprise the post-traumatic stress disorder. While each woman is unique for those who take the risk trust me, there does appear to be a similar pattern of residual tribulations in the clinical presentation to include feelings of depression, fear, anxiety, shame, guilt, anger, and powerlessness. I recall the revolving door of drunk horny man from the neighborhood who would come knocking on our front door to be with you while Dad was working late at night in the city. I clearly recall coming home from school early one day as a young adolescent, only to what sounded like a sexual free-for-all between you and your boss in the very same bedroom you shared with my father. I stood motionless outside your bedroom door while time stood still. I was paralyzed by the reality of what had just happened with you standing there in your pennies in his intimate embrace as you gave him one last kiss goodbye. Before Dad passed away, he told me that you had an abortion after being impregnated by your own father. I remember seeing you swimming the nude with your father when I was about only five years old while we were on family vacation. My sister told me that her father attempted to sexually violate her the night he took his own life. How could so much pain and suffering be inflicted on so many innocent children across generations by one reprobate predator? It was easy to hate my grandfather for these atrocities and the cycle of violence they perpetrated in how you abuse your children. As much as I wanted to abhor you as a child, I couldn't. Instead, I dedicated myself to the mission of saving you from yourself. I only wish I could, Amal. I'm a psychologist today because of this need to save someone, at least in part, if only one lost soul. I've carried an overwhelming burden of shame and guilt for how I couldn't protect you or my siblings. I've lost myself in the process of focusing on the needs of others and found solace in alcohol and drugs. This caused me to fail at being the father my, children, my own children deserved. While I did not physically or sexually abuse them, I was not emotionally available to them when they needed me the most. So I'm faced with my own anguish over the scars inflicted on them by the violation your father started this family heritage of shame. And each day, to step in atonement and mercy as our relationships continue to heal. I finally come to a place where I can forgive myself and genuinely be for you. I can bring you into the work I do with women, the sanctity of these trusting hours in therapeutic relationships, helping them to move through pain. For this gift, you have given to me, I thank you. Please know that I'll forever love your grandchildren and they have turned out to become loving and compassionate parents of their own children despite my transgressions. I trust you will rest in peace knowing that the chain has finally been broken in your grandchildren. In the meantime, as women have told me their stories, I've witnessed the miracles of life transformed in my presence. I feel honored and humbled, amazed at the women who trust, who open their hearts to me. The gift, the message they have given me now is 
there is hope. 